Okay, so dear Dhamma practitioners, be comfortable yourself and relax your body. Keep your back straight, neck head straight in one line and your right palm on your left. So gently close your eyes and bring your attention to this bell sound. So while you're focusing to the sound, mentally relax your body, relax your mind and relax your breathing with your thoughts. Do nothing extra. Just follow the sound, please. Namo tas bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhas Namo tas bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhas Namo tas bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhas Homage to the blessed one the exalted one, the fully enlightened one. So bring your attention to your body, please. And observe head to toes yourself and say Sopatveva or may I be well and happy three times. Take a moment and think. We gathered here in this moment to practice this ancient meditation technique. All the Buddhas, all the enlightened masters followed this path and achieved wisdom. So we also gathered here to accumulate that knowledge in this moment with this sitting. May my body become more comfortable. May my breath be more smooth. May no difficulties come to me. May all the success come to me. Also think for a moment. This is the last moment we are spending in this very lifetime. And detach your mind from all your past memories and as well as any kind of future thoughts. Just try to remain in the present moment observing the sensation of your inhalations and exhalations. So in the beginning, we're going to relax our body step by step. Following my words, mentally relax your body, please. Relax your head. Relax your forehead. Relax your eyebrows. Relax your eyes, relax your ears, relax your nose, relax your upper lip, relax your lower lip. Relax your chin. Relax your whole face muscles. Relax your teeth. Relax your tongue. Relax your mouth.
relax your throat. Relax your neck. Relax your shoulders, arms, elbow, forearms, palms, fingers, fingertips. Relax your whole back muscles and relax your spine. Relax your chest and relax your abdominal muscles. Relax your lungs. Relax your heart. Relax your liver. Relax your kidneys. Relax your gallbladder. Relax your pancreas. Relax your small intestine. Relax your large intestine. Relax your abdominal organs. Relax your bottom. Relax your thigh. Relax your knee. Relax your calf muscles. Relax your foot and relax your toes. Relax your whole body muscles, tendons, ligaments, bone bone marrows and whole skeleton. Release the tension in your mind and keep relax your face muscles. So bring your attention to in front of your nose and your upper lip area. Deeply and gently breathe in, breathe out three times and find the sensation, please. So now allow your inhalations, exhalations happen naturally itself. And when it happens, just recognize inhalation as inhalations, exhalations as exhalations. Do nothing extra. Let everything to settle down as it is. Just be very limited only to the sensation of your inhalations and exhalations.
be aware about your own mind. And if your mind go here and there, bring it back. Just be with the sensation of inhalation, exhalation. Your sensation is the only thing happening at the real time. Other everything already gone. So don't look for anything. Follow the entire continuation of the inhalations and exhalations. Knowingly, this is the beginning, this is the middle, this is the end of the inhalation or exhalation. Observe whole breath body. There are two breath bodies, two kind of breath bodies. One is the inhalation or exhalation, entire process. Another one is when the inhalation, exhalation happen, your whole body moving up and down, following that inhalation or exhalation. That also a breath body. Be aware about that both. Each and every inhalation, exhalation has a unique character. Some become longer, shorter, heavy, soft, warm, cold. Just recognize it.
Calming down your body inhalation in heaven, calming down your body exhalation in heaven. See it yourself. Calming down your mind, inhalation happen, calming down your mind, exhalation happens. In your body, your mind, your breathing integrate and depending from each other. Drop all the techniques, methods, patterns. Bring your fully attention and be aware with any sensation, whatever come to you. And allow your mind completely to be free. See only the change happening moment by moment with any perception. And at the same time, know yourself, your consciousness and your recognition also a result of that change. So then it also observe, also change moment by moment. Then finally there is no perception. There is no experience or experience permanently exist. Only it is a moment of existence.
Bring your attention to your body, please. Observe your posture. We cultivate loving kindness and compassion in our heart and radiate it as a light through entire your compound, village, city, state, country, world, around this universe. Also, as far as you can through galaxies, other planets, stars. Reminding yourself like this. With clear intention, mentally repeat after me. May all living beings in this universe be well and happy. May everyone be happy and safe. And may their hearts be filled with joy. May all living beings live in security and in peace. Being so pray low strong, tall or short, big or small, visible or not visible. Near or far away. Already born or yet to be born. May all of them dwell in perfect tranquility. Let no one do harm to anyone. Let no one put the life of anyone in danger. Let no one out of anger or ill will wish anyone any harm. Expand the loving kindness and compassion beginning from your heart. Forward. Visualize yourself and send it as a light. To your backside. to your left side. And to your right side. Downward. and upward.
to all six directions at once, like the moon, the sun, spread the light, spread the energy without any condition, without any limitation, without any resistance or without any judgment. Let your heart to shine with the loving kindness and compassion from the bottom of it with the maximum effort to the highest. Wishing yourself, may all living beings in this universe be well and happy. Say sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. So dear Dhamma practitioners, practicing meditation is nothing but recognizing the moment of experience by yourself but when it come to our life why it became so difficult why we have to specially practice it why you have to listen to lectures or why you have to attend to classes or why you have to go to retreats because it is your 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 life but why it, it more separate and disappeared from us? The very reason when the people start to become more and more and more advanced with the machines and technology and the material world, what happened? They start to invest their life towards the future. Not what, we, what the life that they having, they start to invest the life towards the future. And they compare to their past and comparing to past, start to invest for the future, invest for the future and by the time what happened, we disconnected from the moment of experience. In the ancient time, when the kings ruled the countries, the mostly the kings used to take care of the people and provide the necessary facilities mainly for the moment and allow people to have a good life. So that was one of the major important part when the king ruled the country. Of course, gave the security and provide the necessary facilities to people to have the life. But when it became more advanced and when the people start to learn the, the governing as a subject which we call the politics, and then the, the economy, or then the science, and then the technology, and what we experience today. The all the governments always, more than the present moment of the situation, 
they invest their money towards the future and it doesn't matter whatever in the moment even people die because of the hunger and they don't care but they invest millions millions dollars towards the future plans and the scientists it doesn't matter whatever the situation happened in the moment and the mostly they focus towards the future and just imagine any politicians come and they what they talk about they always talk about the the future what they going to do what they going to do what they going to do so the any country that we call you know they 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 have the budget annual budget they they always talk about the the next year but the thing is this when it come to our spiritual practice it is completely different in the ancient time even during the buddha's time buddha didn't that invest any kind of dharma to to the future no whoever came in the in the present moment that whatever the situation came and according to that situation according to that environment according to that person buddha explained the dharma and somebody remembered that and then later it came to books uh, which we call the tripitaka and then now we have that as record but we have to understand when it come to our practice and the, our life even though that the whole world go towards the the future plans future plans the question is this if you cannot recognize the present situation or the environment or where you are it doesn't matter personally yourself as a family your your life or economically and the, your the wealth asset or as a country as a society as a world if you don't recognize the present condition and the situation how you can make a future plan and how you know it going to become successful so then you have to look into yourself we are kind of like a unlit lamp the difference when it come to that we always projecting to future 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 the unlit lamp if the what the, the, the when the, another lamp come closer it cannot do anything so what is the lit lamp when the in the lit lamp is there the unlit lamp come closer closer it has power to light the this lamp so recognizing yourself understanding the present very present situation is like you lighting your lamp so if you don't light your lamp it doesn't matter thousand thousand unlit lamp around you just imagine what will happen so the buddha is kind of like a lit lamp and recognize the this method and how you can tune to the present moment because mostly during that time even that the transformation liberation or the enlightenment happen mostly beyond your death somewhere else and in this human form you cannot do that but buddha is the one who introduce in this human form in this very moment it doesn't matter whatever happened in your past it doesn't matter your name or your surname 
your ethnical background, your culture, tradition, your profession, your educational system, your wealth, your social status, it doesn't matter. In this very moment, there is the possibility you can light the lamp, transform yourself and gain this liberation. You no need to wait for something. So in the spiritually also, then mostly like the politics in which the, the, there are few plans regarding the future, the economy in which the money regarding their future, the science invent everything thinking about the future. And spiritually also most of people invest their life, invest their practice thinking in the future they can gain result. But when it comes to this practicing meditation, it's nothing to do with that. You don't do meditation thinking that future you're going to get something. So that is something it's different. You have to be very carefully understand it every day when you sit. That's why we always remind this is the last moment in our life. You don't wait for something. Why? Because if you think like that way, then what will happen? The, the best of you are not going to come out of you. So then you have, to, you have to get out of all the conditions and completely be free. And when the mind becomes completely be free, that is where you, you can experience the, the real wisdom of the mind. It's like the key. And we mostly, depending from the society and the outside comparison, and the names and the forms and also social status. And we always depending from what other people saying about us. And we always depending from the future plans. And then, but we don't have the key. But having the key is kind of like this. Just imagine when you have the key, the key doesn't care the hand it holds by. Key doesn't care the hand. But we are kind of like we always forget about the key. We always are thinking about the condition of the hand. Who is holding it? The name and the fame, you know, from where, what background, what's the say name? What is the provision? You know, so that kind of what is the color? You no, know, what is the experience? So we always busy with that, but we don't have the key. So when you having the key, when you have the awareness, mean you have the key. When you have the awareness in your mind, it doesn't matter from where you come, who you are. And what is the background and what kind of history that you carry, it doesn't matter. So that is where you should slowly, little by little, deeper in your heart, need to find the place. Because once you get into that, you're going to recognize something which you cannot transform to words, which you cannot get into books which, which you cannot transform or give it to somebody like a prayer, like a blessing. You cannot give it to like that. Way. So it is your own effort. But the thing is that as a human being, any human being has a cap capacity to gain that. So then you have to look yourself. And as you know, the very human life begin with the word water. There are all these living beings. The water, it's a billion, billion years, trillion years old history carried by the water. 
And when you look at here and there, it is so powerful, strong, but still human has capability to do irrigate, transform, guide that water and send it through the turbine and bring the electricity and do it and bring it to the higher lands and do the cultivation and provide it in many, many ways and get the facilities out of that water. Human has that cap capacity, the power, abilities. So then yourself, transform your mind is kind of like a, to become like a water, that the ability to transform the water and uh, transform your experience yourself and rather than go with it, rather than tangle with it, rather than caught up in that current, develop your mind like how the human transform this water. And as you know, the fire, even according to the normal human history, more than two million years ago, people found the fire. From that day to today, people did a lot of miracles. They achieved to some unthinkable progress out of the fire. And they, it is so powerful, but still they used to maintain it. So you, in your mind, you have that capacity. So then you have to see how people used to, to get the, the water and even bring from low land to higher land and even the, the fire, so dangerous, but still they're able to, to develop and transform and bring something good out of it. And the iron, when it comes to human history, and it changed entire civilizations. Once people found out the iron, and according to the normal history, 100, 1200 BC and before, uh, the, during that kind of time. And then after that, look how this transformation happened in this material world. This all what? we experience it all power of human mind. So then you are in a journey, you gain some progress. And if you have just a piece of clay in your hand, you can bring something out of it. And you can transform that clay to a pot, or cup, or plate, or kind of like anything. It's a, the it's a power of the mind. So then what you have to understand, when the thought come to you, when the experience come to you with your eye, ear, nose, tongue, body, when the perception have come to you, always remember there are two ways. One is you can surrender to that perception. You can surrender to the outside world and go with it, go with that current. And another choice, you can be conscious about the perception and you can transform that perception to the way you want. So you can go with it. So whatever, there are people like that. So that it's a kind of like the, the perception can eat you or you can eat the perception. It is up to you. Perception can take you anywhere or you can transform that perception to anything. So the being conscious means so whatever the perception come to you, 
and whatever the form feeling perception volition and the recognition happening in you rather than go with it rather than surrender to it rather than accepting it rather than resisting it and you take a conscious decision and say what you want out of that so when you take that conscious decision what happened and you become the master so the world going to become the students but if you accept the perception and you go with it you become the student the world going to be the master that is what called the samsara so then always remember where we should start you have to come to yourself and see the life that you are spending look in the present moment and see rather than investing towards the future first start to look where you are what happened to you and what you experience out of this life so according to the your age just imagine you compress that all day and you put that all your from birth to today that all the life experience to the blend and you blend it blend and blend it blend it blend it blend it blend it and you make a capsule out of that entire your life experience and see what what you gain out of this what you understand it today in case tomorrow your children ask mommy daddy what is life what you going to give them as a right answer you cannot give the answers from the books the lectures you heard so kind of like that because that is what we keep doing can you honestly give a real answer from your own life experience is there anything that you found out so that is why you have to look into that and see and we sometimes we think oh we capable to do this that that like that but we are not capable to even see that whatever come the perception to our eyes and we know we have no capability to understand it is right or wrong and whatever we hear we think oh i i understand but we have no capability to understand this is that what we hear is right or wrong if you have that capability this any politicians not going to pass their next election it not going to happen look at that after many many years you recognize that person told lies but when I mean, that person telling it you didn't know you thought oh i am right I, i know this i understood it even the, the the many many you know the teachers the theories methods the it's everything come in the moment we recognize oh this is right and even whatever you brought and whatever you order online when you look at it it is oh this is so good you know this is exactly what i want so like that you used to read reviews and go here and there and such you thought i found it but when it reached to you and once you open the book and you recognize maybe after few days you recognize this is not what i saw and then what we does rather than the mistake we did we start to go and replace and go behind the, the world no look into yourself and see what happened to your own inner experience what happened that the the experience you believed so when it come to vipassana so in mainly we have two mental cultures samatha mental culture and vipassana mental culture so the samatha mental culture means tranquility meditation you tranquilize calm down and 
then you settle down. You without going here and there and another way it called undisturbed mind. So in the vipassana, any it's a it's deeply you observe, thoroughly you observe what you observe, not in the, the, the whatever your own inner experience. That experience should be in the in the moment what you experience, not what you thought or not what you projecting thinking about the future. No, the in the moment what you experience you should look into it deeply, thoroughly. So today I'm going to tell you another way of understanding what is this Vipassana. Listen this very carefully and get it. And when you practice yourself, because you can experience only this by practicing Vipassana. There's no another way. So the very condition of the mind is always Go with the perception. And then when it comes to eye, ear, nose, tongue, body, mind, and whatever come to your eye, and the eye consciousness arise, whatever come to your ear, ear consciousness arise, and whatever come to your nose, nose consciousness arise, whatever come to your tongue, tongue consciousness arise, whatever perception come to your body, body Consciousness arise, whatever comes to your mind, mind consciousness arise. So there is no magic. That is what we experience as life. So those are the only six perceptions come to us. There is nothing going to come. Don't, don't, don't try to go beyond that. And go trying to go beyond that also kind of like a concept of the mind. Then you caught up in the same mind again. again. So just just accept it and be, be, be natural with that. Don't, don't try to look beyond something. Just see what you experience. So this is the very nature of our inner consciousness, awareness. It can, it can hold only one consciousness at one time. There is no the two consciousness, even though we talk about multitasking, it is a out of passion word in, in the world now, but still sometimes people hold it to that and try to do that way. But when it comes to deeper, the very behavior of the mind, there is no kind of like a multitasking consciousness or the awareness. When something come to appear to your eye, as uh, that appearance, we call this as a form. It brings the feeling and that feelings bring the perception. That perception bring the volition, mental formations, and that bring the, the awareness related to I consciousness, I experience. Listen this, be with me. So whatever come to you here, it is the form. So it brings the, the feelings, out of that feelings, perception happens. Out of that perception, volition or the mental formations arise. And out of that mental formations, the recognition arise. And the nose, the same, tongue, the same, body, the same, so to the mind, the same. So always the inner consciousness. So when something comes to your eye, it only becomes very limited to eye. And when something come to ear, what is happening? It suddenly drop the, the connecting with the, the form related to eye and it start to go towards the ear. So whatever the strong form and it go that way. So then we observing the change, change, change. The another way to recognize the change, analyze the change is this. So when it comes, when some when when any form appear to your eyes, and your inner consciousness start to go with it, you enjoying it. 
And so now you are in the vipassana level of you observing that. So what is this thoroughly deeply observing and analyzing? So when it comes to analytical meditation means you're not going to be very limited only one. And so that is where you can catch the change. So you enjoying, you think, oh, I see the most beautiful thing and this is so good. So like that, now you integrate with your eye consciousness, eye and the form, feeling, and you enjoy, you are in the top of the world. Just, just be with that. And then suddenly what happens, something come to you here. So maybe somebody come and give you a message or maybe somebody call you give a kind of like a very bad news. Maybe you fired or maybe something happened. Maybe somebody died or something. Just imagine where that, that is the news that you should, you don't want to hear, but you hear it. So now what happening? That enjoyment you had, the, the, your consciousness had the the connection with your form related to your eye. So then what happens when it when the ear consciousness arise and give you that information, your inner consciousness drop the connection with the eye consciousness and start to go towards your ear consciousness. That transition recognizing that so when you now you analyzing because you are not become very limited to one experience and you not clinging to that one experience you analyzing you you deeply you thoroughly observing so when you go towards your ear consciousness what happening to that joy what happening to that happiness and you were, you were in the top of the world and it is start to go and change. So it's happening in the consciousness. Now you recognizing the change. So to recognize the change, the transit, the junction from your eye consciousness, how the things happen to your ear consciousness, you have to observe thoroughly. That is another way it's called analytical meditation. And now you are in the sad mood. And then at the same time, you were so hungry. And then somebody brought you some food. And that is the food that you waiting in this life, the dreaming yourself to eat. And then now it is in front of you. So what is happening? Your deeper consciousness drop that the news or the the whatever the the, the related with your your consciousness, and then you go with the tongue consciousness. Oh, this is so good. And then what happens? See, now you are. Whatever you enjoy with the eye, it disappear. And then whatever you had the, the sadness with the ear, it disappear. And now you enjoying with the tongue. So then while you eating, there's a bad smell come. Suddenly what happening? That your deeper consciousness, it's, an, it's natural, whatever is strong, it go and get it. That's the nature. So you have no power of it because your consciousness is a result of the perception. That is the reason. That's why whatever is strong, it go with that. So now you eating and enjoy, oh, this food is so good, you know, and I was so waiting for this, then suddenly bad smell come. So then what happened to your mind? Oh, then it again unpleasant moment come. Why? Because the consciousness had the connection with your tongue and it start to go with whatever the strong perception. And then bad smell come. 
And then suddenly that bad smell come and then somebody appeared. In this life that, that you, were, you were waiting for that person to meet in your life. You are dreaming to see that person maybe. Maybe per the, the, the person that you love in your mind or maybe you dating or maybe your husband or wife, your child or anybody, that why whoever you love. And then maybe you don't you don't see the you don't feel the 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 smell anymore. And then even you forget about the corona, maybe you go and hug that person. See? And then your how the transition happened. So rather than hold it to this anything, any moment of experience, you see within your eye how it happened and change and within your ear what happened so if you observe this is another way it's called analytical observation thoroughly deeply you observe why because now you you expand the capacity of your observation rather than becoming very limited to one perception or the one experience or the one consciousness. So then you see this always is a change, it's a behavior, natural behavior happening with your eye, ear, nose, tongue, body, mind, so like that way. It is not a magic. And if you don't see it, what will happen? If you don't see this change, what will happen, whatever you see and you enjoying it. And then you are top of the world. And then somebody come, remember the bad news, bring the bad news. No, 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 no. I'm, uh, let me, let me finish this. You know, so like that, you are trying to clinging and go with it and resisting this. So like that way. So whatever the strong things we hold it to, it and then we resist all other things. So if anybody come and disturb anything, come and disturb to whatever hold it, and then we go mad, become sad, worry, angry, hate. So that's kind of. So then remember, rather than clinging to its own nature, you have power to observe. So that observation. Also on the result of mind, but it is more deeper, higher level of experience. So it's, it's like this. And sometimes uh, some people can say, from where it come? Maybe it is the power of the, the unseen creator or somebody. No, it's, it's like this. Just imagine when you eat the mango, when you eat an apple, blueberry, strawberry, or any food, whatever that, what fruits, whatever you eat. Is it the root? It is the branch, is it the tree leaves? It, is it the trunk? Or what it is? So then, then imagine if you take out the, the roots, I only need the fruits. So cut down the, the roots. Do you think after that, 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 the, that the tree can bring that fruits? So if you cut down the trunk, oh, I don't need, we're not going to eat this. Can, you, can that tree bring the fruits? If you cut down, cut down the branches and the tree leaves or the flowers, we don't eat flowers. We need only the fruits. So how about when the flowers come, you cut all the flowers. From after that, you can you get the fruits? So your awareness is the final result of becoming a human being. That is the completion of the human being. That is why in this human life, this enlightenment is possible. So that is what who you are. So you have that gift, claim it. Don't, don't die wasting it. 
because trillion billion billions other animals in the world other living beings seeing unseen living beings in this universe we cannot bring it to numbers that much but out of that all you got this beautiful moment so then develop it in you last but not least when you came to this world you cried other everybody laugh smile you cried no and like that other everybody oh you look at this baby look at this baby so when you go and when you die remember transform yourself when you die do something reminding your death at least somebody to cry and yourself in your death moment to smile yourself so there is a possibility yourself and transform yourself that transformation come not by praying not by dreaming not by projecting not by thinking not by chanting not by asking not by claiming not by fighting that transition happen only by observing and recognizing not the outside but your inner own experience so be aligned with that so with that i bless upon everyone with this good, good practice may all of you be well happy and peaceful may no harm come to you may no difficulties come to you may no problems come to you may you also have the patience courage understanding and determination to meet and overcome inevitable difficulties in your life during this time period may everyone stay healthy and safe and finally may all of you attain supreme bliss of nibbana sabhitiyo vajjantu sabrogo vinasatu mate bhavatantarayo sukhi dika yuku bhav etavata cha mi sampadam punya sampadam sabbe deva namudantu sabba sampatti siddhiya sabbe bhuta namudantu sabba sampatti siddhiya sabbe satta namudantu sabba sampatti siddhiya idam mi punya kammanga savakaya vahanhotu sabba dukkha pamuntu bless you.